Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how you can use um, a binary uh, save script to save not just your item count but also uh, stop items from reappearing. So to start, um, let's take a look at what we have. Um, this is a very simple setup just for the tutorial. <laughs> this is not my game. Um, this is our first scene. We have two orange pickups here. We have a little green cube that will take us to the second scene and then we'll go from that scene back to the first. So let me show you first why we need a save script in the first place. So here's my game. Um, you can see right here, that's my item count. Um, when we go over these two uh, pickups, our item count goes up to two. So far, so good. But when we go to our second scene, we can see that that item count has reset to zero. And when we return to the first scene, our items have reappeared. And so uh, going from one scene to the other, or one level to the other, uh, eliminates all our progress. And so we want a way uh, to save our progress and to stop those items uh, from coming back that we've already picked up. Okay, well now let's say that you have found a way to um, keep your item count saved between levels and between uh, starts of the game, but not the state of the item. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, so when we start the game, sorry this is a little hard to read, uh, our level code count is zero. These orange balls are our uh, level code. So we go over them, um, they go up to one, they go up to two, so that's great. Uh, and when we move to the next level, we see that our level code count is still two, so that's that's good to see. The problem is, uh, when we return here, um, our uh, orange pickups are back, and so we can actually just kind of cheat by uh, picking them up, leaving the scene, going back to the scene, and picking them up again. Uh, so, you know, our item count's now six, and so if you had 100 items in your game, um, you know, and you had a system like this, the player wouldn't have to collect 100 items. They could just kind of keep collecting the same two items over and over again, and that's not really what you want. So we're going to find a way not just to save the item, not just to save the item count, but also to stop those items from reappearing. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what it looks like when we are able to save not just our item count, but also the, the state of the items and stop them from coming back. So first I'm going to show you what it looks like in practice, and then we'll go through the scripts. Uh, so here's my game. Our level code count course is zero. I'll show you what these fancy save and low buttons do soon. Uh, but first we're going to collect these two items. Um, our level code count is now two. We're going to go to our second level, our second scene. Uh, our level code count is still two, but what's so different here is when we come back, those uh, items haven't reappeared. So now we're going to actually save our progress. We'll press save. Now we're going to exit out, and we're going to start to play again. Um, now those items have come back, but don't fear. We're going to press load, and boom, the items are gone, and our level code count is back up to two. And so what we've done is we have saved our progress in the last game. We've also um, deleted those items we've already collected. Uh, and now let's look at what scripts we're using to make this work. Okay, well, I'll start by saying that um, these scripts are really thanks to Mike Gage, who uh, did a wonderful tutorial on saving and loading in Unity that, I'll, uh, that I linked to in the comments. Um, so if you haven't seen that tutorial, please watch that um, right after you watch this video, because I'm not going to explain anything that he already explained. Uh, I'm just going to show how I tweaked it uh, to stop those items from coming back. So we'll start by opening up um, the game control script. So I have uh, an empty object here called game control, just as Mike had. Uh, and this is our game control script. Um, so let's open up this script. So uh, here's a game control script again. Um, this is really all Mike Gig's work. All I've done here is a couple things. Uh, his public integers were health and experience. I've changed mine to um, pick up count, pick up one state, and pick up two state, and I'll explain why soon. Um, I, you know, and then I just kind of kept on modifying the script to incorporate uh, the pick up one count and the pick up one state uh, there, um, back up there, down here, and down there. So basically, his script, and I just made some some modifications to fit my needs. Great, so um, the next script, I'll start with another easy one. Um, under our main camera, which is attached to the character, we have uh, Mike's um, uh, GUI script. I learned that word from him. I thought it was GUI, but okay, GUI. 
Um, so when we look at that script, um, it's the same as his. All I've done is I've taken off the buttons that let you manually adjust your item counts. So all we have here are the save and load buttons. So those are very important. Okay, so finally, um, I'm going to show you the kind of extra script that I put in that makes all of this uh, work. And that is uh, a pretty simple object pickup script. Um, so it's attached to my character. I've given it a ridiculously long name of pickup persistent script. So let's go and edit this one. Um, okay, so I have uh, I've set two public game objects, pickup one and pickup two. Um, so what I'm what I'm doing here is when the player hits either of my items, either pickup one or pickup two, and I have those identified by tags, um, I'm doing three things. First, I set that game object to false, um, so I deactivate it, and then. In my game control script, so remember I had pickup counts stored in the game control. I don't have pickup counts stored here. It's in the game control. It's uh, kind of saved there, I guess. And when I run over anything tagged pickup one or pickup two, I am going to increase that pickup count by one. Uh, and so that is why when I play the game, you're seeing uh, that level code count uh, go up to two. I have it called level code count in the game. Um, so that lets me set my level code. But as far as my pickup state goes, um, what I have here is I have, so in my control, in my game control, I have these pickup states defined. I have to start with them defined as one. Um, but in my script, I have the pickup states set to zero uh, when I go over the items. So the items are in a state of one. Uh, when I run over them, the pick, that pickup state changes to zero for both of them. And I have unique. Uh, state numbers for each. So why is that important? Well, let's go down to the update component. I'm telling the game, uh, if, if, so if pickup one state for pickup one is zero, and if pickup two state for pickup two is zero, I want the game to destroy pickup one and destroy pickup two. And I have pickup one and pickup two defined as public objects here. And in my character's uh, pickup persistent script, I have those defined there. Um, so those are kind of the three components that make it work. And I'll try, it might be make a be a little simpler to see. So let me show you how all this works in action. Um, okay, so let's take a look. Let's look at the game control. So um, my pickup one states start out as one. When I go over pickup one, uh, watch closely at my hierarchy here too. When I go over it, I've not just deactivated, I've also set that pickup state to zero. And because I've told the game, um, you know, delete pickup one, pickup two, if that pickup two state is zero, uh, pickup two has disappeared from my hierarchy. And the same thing happens when I do pickup one. So now both of those states are zero. Um, the beauty of uh, Mike's game control script is that uh, because it has that don't destroy and load item object, even when I go to the second scene, um, that game control script is still functioning. It hasn't been destroyed. And so the pickup one states are still zero, and because they're still zero, um, my pickups still aren't there. But my level co count it has stayed the same. And when I go back, um, the level co count is still two, and the items aren't there. Um, and of course, when I press the save button, all of that data is stored in binary format, so it's really hard to access by the user. Um, of course, when I start the scene, um, you know, I haven't loaded any data, but when I load it again, again, watch those pickup states and watch the hierarchy. The states convert to zero and the pickups disappear. Um, now, an important note here, let's go back to um, my pickup script. So, obviously, a game with only two pickups wouldn't be that fun. Um, in my final game, I plan to have maybe 50, 60 pickups. Maybe I'll make hundreds of pickups in future games because it will be a 3D platformer of sorts where you access new levels by picking up items. Um, as far as I can tell, there's no reason why I can't have 150 uh, game objects named pickup twos, pickup 149, pickup 150, and then I would just copy and paste this a lot so that I would have you know 150 tags, 150 different pickup states. Um, there's probably, I'm sure that there's an easier way to do that, maybe by making a list or an array. I'm not Honestly, I'm not advanced enough to uh, figure that out. I'm still very new to Unity. Um, if I do figure it out, maybe I'll make another tutorial. 
But overall, the point here is that um, this is really a, a nice way to, um, you know, save not just your item count, which obviously is important, but also to stop those items from reappearing so the player can't just cheat by picking up the same item over and over again. Um, so, yeah, I'm, you know, obviously it's really all thanks to my gig. I'm just making this tutorial to show uh, how I modified it for my needs. But obviously, obviously, um, you know, if you haven't seen Mike Gage's tutorial, uh, please watch it. it. I would have saved 10 hours of frustration if I just watched that tutorial before trying to do all this myself. Um, and actually, you know, if any of you are very experienced with Unity, if you could tell me why um, when I leave this scene and come back, notice how I'm slowly getting these really harsh shadows. If you could tell me why that's going on, I'd really appreciate that because notice how the lighting here is a lot harsher than the lighting when I start the game. Uh, that would be great. But uh, thank you so much for watching.